Hello everybody, I'm Nick and today I'm going to show you how you can add health checks in your ASP.NET Core application. ASP.NET Core has built-in support for health checks and it makes it very very easy to add health checks for different components like a database or the Redis cache or customize our own. The first thing I want to explain is what is a health check. And a health check is just a check for the health of our application. We check whether our application is working or different components in our application. So our database, our cache, some dependencies we might have on a different API. We can check all that by hitting a specific endpoint. In this scenario, it will be the health endpoint. The first reason of why we do that is because we want to know, you know, monitoring, how is our application doing? But we also want to know that if we use a traffic manager on top of our REST APIs and we have a scaled out system like this, then we need to know which of these APIs are healthy to redirect traffic to them. If for some reason our REST API goes down, well, we have four others to actually deal with the traffic. So the traffic manager knows which API is healthy and will only send traffic there if the API is healthy. So we achieve zero downtime, which is great. Now let's just dive into the code. The first thing I want to do is go in, into our installers folder and create a new class called health checks installer. And this will be implementing our I installer interface. So let's implement the missing members. And this is how we register stuff in our DI in this system. You can go back to the third video of the series. If this is unknown to you, watch that. It explains why we do that. And just by using ASP.NET Core, we can do services.add health checks. And this will add the service related side of things for our health checks. We need to go to the startup as well. And in the configure method, the one with the application builder, all we need to do is go in the top and add an app.use health checks. And what we need to customize here is we need to give it an endpoint for this health check. So we're going to do forward slash health. And that's it. If I just build my project and run it, let me show you what happens when we hit the health endpoint. As you can see here, and if I zoom it a little bit, you can see that we get a big healthy message here. So if I refresh that, Again, the application is healthy because the API is up, but this doesn't actually check much in depth. It's just a very basic check to check that the API is running. Now, if the API wasn't running, you wouldn't be getting a response from a health check anyway. So what we need to do is actually check the dependencies. In this scenario, we have two dependencies. We have the SQL server and we have the Redis cache. I'm going to show you two things. I'm going to show you how you can use a package that already exists to add for entity framework to check the health of a specific DB context. But I'm also going to create a custom one for our Redis cache because there are a few packages there, but I just want to show you how we can customize them as well. So if I just stop this API now, what I want to do is I'm going to go to dependencies and manage my NuGet packages. And I'm going to search for the following package, Microsoft dot X extensions dot diagnostics and we can actually see it here it's this package diagnostics dot health checks dot entity framework core asp .NET core has packages for these types of things so most of the health checks exist here so if i just close this you can actually see going back to the health checks installer that i can do the following dot add db context check and then I can specify my DB context and the DB context I want to use is my data context. And simply by doing that, I now added a check for my DB context. So the system knows how to actually run a query to this to validate its health. If I run my API now, the response will be the same. I'll still see this healthy message. I understand that this is not very helpful. So let's see how we can customize it. First, we need a few contracts. We'll go to the contracts project and at the top level, this doesn't really need to be versioned. So I'm going to create a health check folder. And I'm going to create two classes. The first one is the health check response. And what I'm going to have here is a string called status. The second one is an enumerable of health check and we're going to create this class in a bit and we're going to name this checks and the last one is a time span and this is the duration that all the checks within this response took to complete so let's go ahead and make this health check in our contract and what this will have is first again 
a status of its own because you want to know the individual component status then this is another string called component and this is the name of the component that's either failing or passing and another one called description and in there we can just add helpful data to describe what's wrong or what is not going right so with that out of the way now we have our contracts but we also need to use those contracts to write the response we can do that in the startup.cs in this use health checks method there's actually an overload that's accepting health check options so new health check options and in here there is something called the respond writer this is a function that accepts the HTTP context and the report for a specific component and we can use that to write a response. So let me just show you. This will be an async call and this delegate accepts or provides actually a context which is the HTTP context and a report which is the report for this check. And now what we need to do is we need to set the response content type because currently it's just text. So the content type we want is application JSON because we will be serializing this as a JSON string. And then we have our response, which is a new health check response. And first we need to set the status and this equals to report dot status to string. And then this report has a few values in it. So we need to pass those as the sub responses for each component. So we're going to say checks equals report dot entries dot select. And we're going to say new health check here. And then component equals x dot key. The key is the name of the thing we're checking. Then status. And this equals to the value dot the status dot to string and this describes the status and then description and this will equal value dot description not data description and last but not least we need to set our duration so the duration is report dot total duration what we now need to do is to write this response so context dot response dot write async and we're gonna JSON convert this to a string so serialize object the response we just created and this is it so now we have the exact same health check with the database check but now we're expecting a different more detailed response for what's happening so let me run the project and show you what happens now i'm going to use postman to visualize this better so let's hit the health endpoint and see what's happening here you go now our object instead of just being a healthy string is a JSON object and we have the status which is the overall status being healthy and then we have individual checks so this check is healthy and that's the data context check and we get the total duration of the whole health check and how long it took. Adding an automated check is fine and all but what happens if you want to write out your own custom health check? Well I'm going to show you how you can do that now. First I'm going to create a new folder here and I'm going to name it health checks. And in here, I'm going to create a new class and I'm going to name it Redis Health Check. ASP.NET Core has this interface called iHealthCheck. And this interface, if we implement the missing members, adds this method here, the check health async. All we need to do is implement that with our custom logic and this supports the I and all. And if something doesn't expect as we want it, we can return degraded or unhealthy and if it does work as expected then just return healthy so I'm gonna do that right now the first thing I need to do is go back to the cache installer and I'm going to add the I connection multiplexer of Redis as a singleton here because we're gonna need it to check the status of Redis so I'm gonna do add singleton I connection multiplexer and this isn't needed we're just gonna do connection multiplexer dot connect and we're going to pass the string which is already beneath us here so we're going to use that and this is enough to register the i connection multiplexer and then in the redis health check i'm going to create a private read only i connection multiplexer 
and I'm going to inject that through the constructor. And now all I need to do is try to make a call to Redis, either get a key that doesn't exist or the database itself. And if I get an exception, then something is wrong. If I don't get an exception, then it's healthy. So let's just try that. I'm going to create a top level try. And this is just one of the many approaches you can go about it. I'm just going to go with a try catch. If you want a more controlled check, you can do that as well. So what I want to do is I want to get a database and I'm going to say connection multiplexer dot get database. And I think this check would be enough, but just let's go one step further and just say database dot string get and let's get a string that doesn't exist. This would be enough for our system to fail its Redis connectivity. So at this point, we're going to say return task dot from result health check result dot healthy. And if there is an exception, then I want to say return task dot from result health check result dot unhealthy. And in here, I can actually pass, as you can see, a description or an exception. I would not recommend an exception being passed here in an open system because you might have some sensitive information that you might not want to expose. And the same thing goes for the description. But for now, for this demonstration, I'm going to show you how you can pass a description. So I'm going to do exception dot message and just pass the message of the uh, exception as the message here. And now to actually register that, I will go back to my health checks installer and I will say add check and I'm going to use the class I just created. So Redis health check and I'm going to give the component a name and I'm going to say just Redis here. Now with that out of the way, let's just run an application and see how that looks. Here I have the health check from the previous run. So if I just send it again, as you can see, now we have two checks in our overall healthy status with this specific duration. This is the data context and this is the Redis component and they're both healthy. Now, what if I go in Docker and I do Docker PS and I take down the Redis cache. So let's see Docker stop and I give it the name of the container. Now this is now stop. So let's just hit the check and see what happens. Oh, suddenly our system is now unhealthy because even though the data context is healthy, Redis itself is unhealthy. And we check what the error is for the unhealthiness. If you also have noticed, the status code is now 503, which is a standard unhealthy code for health check endpoints. You can customize that in the same place where I showed you how to customize the response as well. But this is very, very nice and simple. So now if I go back to the container and I say docker start this same container and I run the health check again, suddenly it's all healthy again. It's very simple, very easy. You can customize it and extend it as much as you want. So give it a go, try it, see how far you can take it and leave a comment down below with what custom checks you made. That's all I had for you for this video. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.